guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be going over the myths and facts when it comes to bioactive setups for reptiles. Now don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you are new here because I do put out two new videos of animals every week. A bioactive setup is a terrarium that has its own ecosystem. It is self-maintaining and self-sustaining. It has live plants and tiny organisms that live in the soil. This is what a reptile would encounter if it was in nature out in the wild. It is a huge contrast to keeping reptiles on things like newspaper, paper towel, and tile. Now people who are used to keeping snakes and geckos and other types of reptile on newspaper and paper towels are very fearful of bioactive setups. And it's completely normal for people to be afraid of things that they don't understand. So that is why today I'm going to be going over the myths as well as some of the pros and cons of keeping a bioactive terrarium. Now the first one I always hear is loose substrate will cause impaction. That is mostly a myth. I often wonder if people are considering where their pet reptiles come from because they have been living out in the wild for millions of years and they don't live on paper towels. And the argument to this is sometimes, well, they don't have sand where they live. And you know what, more often than not, yes they do. Now this isn't even to say that bioactive terrariums are going to have sand. They hardly ever do. In fact, they always have different types of substrate such as dirt, so loose substrate like that will be there. Now impaction is real and it is something that can happen with reptiles, but more often than not it is caused by improper husbandry than anything else. So if the reptile is kept with the correct temperatures, with the right placement of water, and fed the correct diet, if they swallow small amounts of substrate, it's gonna pass through their body. This is natural and it happens in the wild. Just take careful consideration when choosing the substrate that you're gonna use for your bioactive terrarium for your reptile or amphibian. This next very common myth is often associated with snakes but can also be with other reptiles and amphibians. And that is that bioactive terrariums will give you snake mites. This is a myth. Using natural materials in your snake's terrarium is not going to give you snake mites. Now when you get a new animal, whether it's a snake or other type of reptile, you should be putting that animal in quarantine to make sure it is completely healthy and to monitor it to make sure that it doesn't have mites. So you should never get a new reptile and immediately put it into a bioactive terrarium. You need to monitor that animal and if you have any used tanks or things like that that go in the tanks, you need to clean them very, very well before using them because you don't know what they might have had before you got them. Now once you've taken those precautions, you don't have to worry about snake mites. And materials that are collected in the United States and the United Kingdom are not going to come with mites that are parasitic to reptiles. And in some cases, it's even been shown that springtails used in the bioactive terrariums actually eat the snake mite eggs and this kills off the population. The next myth is bioactive terrariums are dirty and hard to clean. This is a myth. When you have given your bioactive terrarium time to establish and it is fully functioning, waste is going to be broken down very quickly. You don't have to clean a bioactive terrarium once it has established. The organisms that you're using as your cleanup crew are going to take care of the poop for you. Usually you might just need to wipe down the front of the glass and that's really the only cleaning that you're doing. In my snake terrarium, I use isopods as well as springtails and dubia roaches as the cleanup crew for my snake. Before my snake was in a bioactive terrarium, it would stink as soon as he pooped. But now that he is in a bioactive terrarium, his tank actually never smells. And you shouldn't be taking items out of the terrarium to sanitize them. This just defeats the purpose of even having a bioactive setup. And the only thing that you should be washing on a regular basis is the water bowl. Bioactive terrariums are the lazy way of taking care of reptiles and amphibians. Myth. I've gotten this attack personally many times. People with bioactive terrariums are not lazy. Just because we are not cleaning the tank in the same way that you would a sterile environment does not mean that we are not putting work into that tank. In fact, I would say that having a bioactive terrarium is more challenging than having a sterile tank. It's easy to take out things and sanitize them, wash them, but it is more difficult to have to learn 
all of the information that goes into bioactive tanks and being able to understand the whole concept of it and then applying that knowledge to it. And then you have to maintain the plants with trimming and with watering. You could definitely argue that washing something is a lot easier than understanding the science behind bioactive. After all, physical labor is often paid less than mentally challenging jobs. Lights are harmful to nocturnal species. Myth. Again, let's go back and consider where our reptiles are from. Yes, there is light in the wild, and yes, your plants are going to need a grow light. And no, this is not going to harm your nocturnal species. If your reptile or amphibian has a place where they can hide from the light, they're going to be perfectly fine. In fact, the light can offer them a natural cycle and help them maintain a healthy life. In fact, there are some studies that are coming out saying that nocturnal species do benefit from UVV lights. And it is a complete myth that a UVV light will harm your leopard gecko. Nocturnal species can benefit from lights as well. And this is something that people bring up to me as well because my snake has a heat lamp on him and they say that the light's going to bother him. You know, that light is actually so dim that I can't even use it to see him at night. And besides that, if you have ever been outside in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere, you know that it is not pitch dark. It's often super bright. Next, cleanup crew will infest my home. Myth. Isopods and springtails that are used in bioactive terrariums are not going to infest your house. These animals have the perfect environment inside of that bioactive terrarium. They have no desire to get out of it. And let's say that they did fall out or somehow some escaped. They're not going to survive in the cold and dry climate that is your house. And the last myth, bioactive terrariums are not good for reptiles and make them more wild complete myth. This could not be further from the truth. Reptiles often become friendlier when put in bioactive terrariums. They don't feel scared all the time. They feel more at home, more comfortable, more confident, and therefore are easier to interact with. Reptiles are often thought of as stupid and not that evolved. That is a terrible way to think about them. They are amazing animals with fascinating adaptations. So why would you want to take a beautiful creature like that and stick it in a box with newspaper? Our pet reptiles deserve so much more than this. They need environmental enrichment, the same that you would give a mammal. So these bioactive terrariums, that is what is going to make your reptile or amphibian happy. Now some of the cons of having a bioactive terrarium is that it is harder to monitor the reptile's poop. But just like I said, if you have a new reptile or amphibian, you should be putting them in quarantine to make sure that they are healthy. Keep it in a sterile tank for several weeks to be able to monitor its poop. And then once it has passed all of the health checklists, then you can add that to your bioactive terrarium. Once you know that your reptile is healthy and that you're applying all of the correct husbandry methods, you don't have to be worried about monitoring that animal as closely. Now another con is that baby reptiles will have a hard time finding food in a bioactive terrarium. You need to figure out what your food source is gonna be and how you're gonna make sure that your reptile is eating that food. For example, dubia roaches are the perfect choice and they also have a very hard time crawling out of a small bowl, so you can put them in a container. But let's say that instead you want to feed mostly crickets to, let's say, a baby crested gecko, then it's probably not a good idea for the baby crested gecko to be in a large bioactive terrarium where it's not going to be able to catch its food. So I recommend keeping them in a small sterile tank for several months till they get a little bit bigger, a little bit better at catching their food, and you don't have to be worried that they're not eating or if the food's, you know, they can't catch it or whatever. So just keep them in a small tank if they're babies and also new reptiles. Make sure your reptile is also eating, but that just goes into making sure that your reptile is healthy and putting them in quarantine, all of that. I really do believe that bioactive terrariums are the best thing that you can offer a reptile. However, there are cases where this won't work for every single animal. Another thing to think about is to use your own judgment. Now, not every reptile would have survived in the wild and natural selection would play a part. If your reptile is not 100% healthy and 100% functions like a member of its species, then a bioactive terrarium is probably not a good idea for it. There are very few people who this exception would actually apply to. So just remember, if your reptile is healthy, then 
totally go bioactive. I will be linking a video of my snake's bioactive terrarium setup and how I did everything. Be sure to write in the comments what reptile you would like for me to do a bioactive setup for next. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter where I do take questions for Q&As. See you guys next time. Bye!